Hello, my name is Vivian Gerard, and I am coming to you on a Monday morning on the new moon in Scorpio to look at the energy, read the tarot cards, and tune into what's happening on our planet at this time. So a new moon is a time of new beginnings, setting intentions for the lunar cycle that is starting. And in the sign of Scorpio, we will probably be experiencing some death and rebirth, some transformations. The sign of Scorpio is one of the most loyal signs, the ones that want to dig in and get to the truth, to the bottom of whatever the topic is that we're looking at. And so at this time of new beginnings, you know, perhaps there are some things in your life that need some truth telling or are ready to be explored at a deeper level. And so we're going to see what the cards have to offer us. I'm going to pull three cards, a, an individual now, a collective now, and then the highest possibilities for the next lunar cycle. And then I will continue with an extended reading and I'll create a guided meditation that's about 20, 25 minutes at the end of this whole process. So you can join me for this beginning part, which will be up on YouTube, or you can purchase the extended and the meditation for $33 and join me there. All right, so I'm going to use the Lightseer's Tarot. I wondered where I put it. Lightseer's Tarot deck for this first reading. And yeah, individual now. Let's take a look at what is, what is happening. We just went through a new moon solar eclipse in Libra and then a lunar eclipse um, at the end, two weeks later. Like, it's been a lot. The individual now. Two of Pentacles, beautiful. The Collective now, the Tower. <laughs> I feel like the Tower is playing everywhere right now. Oh, highest potential for the next lunar cycle. Come on, death and rebirth. I mean, come on, like how perfect is that? How perfect. All right, so let's take a look at each one of them and then we'll see what there is to see. So what do you notice as you look at this one? What did I say? It was the two of pentacles. Individual now. So what do you notice about the movement on the card, the colors, the feeling that she has? What does it bring up in you? And then how does it relate to where you are in this moment? Like your current experience, how you're arriving as you sit and listen to me share in this moment, like do, how does this image resonate or what does it make you think of? Yeah, so for me, when I look at it, I always feel like it's such a juggle. Everything is, you know, trying to be balanced. She's trying to hold what's in her hand, bring down what's coming, deal with all the elements in the wind, make her way forward, and oh yeah, she's all by herself. <laughs> There's nobody around to help her. So she has to figure this all out on her own. I love that that's the individual now because it is a very individual experience. What I love though are the colors in this card. Even with all the movement, there's a sense of tranquility when I look at it. Like everything is uh, harmonious, beautiful, She's in control, like she actually has her hands on both of those pentacles that she's pulling. The wind isn't knocking her over, it's just sort of dancing around her. Like there's a, an artistry or a, there's a flow in the movement that feels really peaceful when I look at it. So why would this be the individual now card? I... I get the sense from lots of people that they're in between, that there's um, an unsteadiness. I talked about this in the Guy's Love podcast, which is back, by the way. <laughs> if you like me beyond tarot, then the Guy's Love podcast is a great place to go. I'm going to be making one every week all the way through when Pluto moves into Aquarius in January. So for the next three months, I'll be doing a weekly episode for myself and then also to see how it resonates with those who are ready to tune in. But I was talking in that about the, um, the ability to sit in the unknown space and how uncomfortable it is for many people, 
for the majority of humans. You know, I think we, we want to know what's coming. And when we don't know what's coming and we're sitting in the wobble, things are exponentially more intense. There's that much more fear because of the unknown. And when I look at this card, I get that same sense of trying to find equilibrium, trying to find uh, the groundedness to hold us steady when it feels like we're being pulled in different directions, when this one in particular feels like manifested reality earth, unmanifested dreams bringing them into manifestation. And so if we're, if we're loving what we've got and we're good, but we're trying to pull something down at the same time and manifest it, how do we, how do we hold the duality of that? How do we find equilibrium when it feels like there's, there's so much in our hands that we're trying to create and do? That could be one version of it. Another could be <clears throat> just overwhelm. There's just too many things. And I was just talking to a friend yesterday and he was saying that he's like, I feel like one more thing is just too many things now. And I get that from lots of people. There's such a burden energy already an overwhelm like we can't keep up with the pace of what is happening in our lives on our planet with the chaos that we see represented all around us and so one more thing added to what we already feel is too much is just too too much like the one thing will set us off it's like a mom <laughs> who has a child that's constantly tapping their leg or poking at them and they're like mom is it now can we do it now can we have it now is it time to go now 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 mama 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 <laughs> it's not the the one mom where the kid actually hits the mom touches them and the mom's like Rah! that sets them off it's the accumulation of all the moms all day <laughs> that actually land the mom in the I'm losing my mind now <laughs> I feel like for many of us that's where we are it's it's not one thing. It's the pile of all the things. And the next thing on top of that pile just topples it all down. So if this resonates for you, then we're going to look now at what do we do. <laughs> how do we navigate this? If this is the current individual experience, how do we navigate it? Well, the collective now, the collective now would say it's a tower moment. So I'm going to let you take a look at the card. Hopefully it'll focus for you. What do you notice about this card? How do the colors make you feel? The animals, the lightning? What emotions are coming up as you look at it? And if you relate this to the collective experience, so 8 billion of us on this planet, the majority of 8 billion are collectively going to go through some sort of tower moment. Like, what does that, what does that bring up in you? What does that make you feel? <clears throat> My throat is doing some massive clearing. <sighs> tower moments. I feel like many people are kind of afraid <laughs> of the tower moment. I mean, just wait till you get the death and rebirth moment, which is coming right after that. <laughs> but a tower to me feels like it's like a tearing it down so we can build something new. You know, when lightning strikes something, it comes down, but then we rebuild. When lightning hits a tree, the tree comes down, but then a new tree emerges from that. So it's, again, that I don't know, and I don't know how long it's going to last. And so the whole experience of not knowing is worse than the actual experience of the tower. So maybe knowing that collectively we are moving through a tower moment, you're like, okay, now I can at least put my mind around that, that collectively we're, we're tearing something down in order to rebuild something that is going to be hopefully better and stronger and wiser and kinder and more loving. But we're in the tower process. We're in the experience of it coming down. Maybe just hearing that from me, knowing that that is what is collectively shifting, <laughs> will make it not so intense because you can, you can hold this image in your mind and go, okay, it's just a moment. It's a tower moment. It's not the end of the world. It's a tower moment. We are in the process of building something new. The tower moment 
collectively, I mean, we're talking about it in the context of the new moon in Scorpio. So within a one month cycle, if we're at a time of new beginnings at the beginning of the cycle with the new moon, then we're going to get to the full moon, we're going to come back to the new moon again. This for the collective could just be the experience of the cycle. From now until the next new moon, we're going to tear down, we're going to deconstruct another layer of whatever the collective is working through. What I think lies underneath that is the shift of Pluto moving from Capricorn to Aquarius. We're in the last three months of that happening. And so underneath these mini cycles, underneath the lunar cycle of this month, the next month, the next month, underneath all of that is this energy of Pluto wrapping up in Capricorn and entering into Aquarius. And that's a threshold. That's a transition moment. That itself is a tower experience. We're tearing down the last of that energy and beginning to maybe it's not right, we're rebuilding the last parts of that energy that had been torn down in Capricorn, and we're beginning to tear down the energy of Aquarius. That's what Pluto will do. Pluto is the ultimate death and rebirth card. And so it's going to come in and shake things up in that sign. So this would make absolute sense that collectively we're in a tower moment. So it's just part of the astrology doing its energetic imprint work on humanity. So maybe the greatest nugget you can take from this card, from this reading, is there's nothing to be afraid of. It's just a process that humanity is evolving through, and we're all doing it together. There's, there's no one person that has the plan. We're co-creating it together. And so can we bring our best version of ourselves individually can we find our equilibrium and our balance and our steadiness and our practice of manifestation? Can we bring our best individual experience into the collective experience and shape how this tower moment moves? Yeah, of course we can. Of course we can. So, highest possibilities for the next lunar cycle. I love that death and rebirth is card number 13. <laughs> So what do you notice as you look at this card? What jumps out at you the most? What emotions come up? Do you feel like you want to go into the card? Do you want to run away from the card? Like what's happening inside of you? This is the highest possibilities for the next lunar cycle. So now for the next three to four weeks, this is the highest potential, is a death and rebirth. It is a time of transformation. So how do we, how do we move? My music just turned off. I just realized that. So strange. Very interesting. <laughs> death and rebirth happening all around. Um, the music that I'm playing is from the Pupa album by St. Finnegan, and to me that is all about the tower moment, the transformation process. So when we think about the highest potential for the next lunar cycle being this, what does that mean? How do we individually, collectively guide ourselves through a death and a rebirth? There's... To me, there's a sense of a surrender to it. It's like we know that there's going to be tower moments. We know that there are going to be um, experiences where reality is shifting, where what we thought was is now becoming something else. And if we surrender to the flow of that and trust how we're guided and then choose how to act from a place of empowered, like, I know this is happening. I know this is the highest potential. I'm going to surrender to it. I'm going to walk myself through it. And every time I do that, I'm stronger. I'm wiser. I have more clarity. In the center of this whole card is this light with the tree underneath. I love the trees in the card. 
There's always a guiding light. There's always truth at the center of every death and rebirth. There's always, like to me, the red cloak feels very mysterious, like the old witches of the old days. You know, there's this mystery around um, transformation. And nobody can actually tell you this is how it works. You follow each of these steps. You have a death in this and a this and this, and then there's a rebirth in this. It's, it's alchemical. It happens within each individual and at our own timing and in our own way and in the, own, in the individual focus that each one has in whatever area they're looking at. Death and rebirth in the context of a new moon in Scorpio is going to look different for so many people. And so can you surrender to the fact that you're going to be in that process and then allow the mystery to carry you through it and focus on the light. Focus on the light that's at the center of that whole mysterious experience. Like, who are you becoming? In this one month, if we're talking about pupa, transformation, if we're talking about new moon in Scorpio, a collective tower experience, who are you becoming in that process? That's the unknown here in the center. Like there's no one face. There's no one way that someone's going to move through the death and rebirth. And that's why this card is so open to interpretation. One of the greatest, oh, is that quite the right way to say it? The mystery of being a soul in a human body is that nobody does it exactly the same way. No one human can say this is the perfect combination of soul, body, mind, heart, creative energy. This is the way we all have to be and do. This is the template that all humans should be because it's the right one, the best one. We've tried that and wars have happened. Horrible things have happened when someone has tried to say this is the only way. So here we are about to move from Pluto and Capricorn to Pluto and Aquarius. Pluto and Aquarius energy is going to say, be you. Be you, the best, most incredible, weird, brilliant, gorgeous version of you. And we're all going to do that. And collectively, we will create a transformation because we're calling forward the best version of our individual selves. Well, if we're not yet the best version of our individual selves, the new moon in Scorpio is saying, okay, let's have a tower moment collectively. Let's go through a death and rebirth process that looks absolutely unique for every individual. And let's see who we emerge as individually and collectively on the other side. Oh my. <laughs> who even knows? Who even knows? And also, isn't that why we came here? Eight billion souls, isn't that why we're here? Because something new is birthing here on this planet, and we wanted to be a part of it. So, it's that time. I wish you a beautiful, peaceful, magical lunar cycle. I'm going to continue with the extended, which you can find at the link below. Um, if you are looking for meditation, that will be available. If you're looking for more support as we go through this tower moment, I offer individual activation sessions for the process of infinite embodiment, being the infinite soul in the human body. They are one hour mind, body, soul activations and they're magical. So you can find the link if you're interested in that. I wish you so much love. Mwah.